so right apologies for the for the slight technical problems and the um uh, for starting. Um, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to follow with, with another apology. One of our speakers uh, today, Uri Davis, uh, is unable to join us. Uh, last, uh, the last minute, the last minute um, um, uh, situation has meant that he's not been able to join us today. We are hoping that uh, Uri will be able to present at a future webinar. Um, but uh, we do have uh, Zainab Ashalalfa and uh, Abir al -Butma. Um, who will be presenting uh, today. So, um, welcome everybody. Um, the latest in the webinar series of Stop the JNF. This is particularly focusing on the JNF's claim to um, environmentalism. Um, and I wanted to start really with this uh, poster from, it's a JNF poster from the 1930s, but 1935. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's, it's quite interesting because it's, um, it, it shows how the JNF itself in the 1930s, blasting, uh, blasting its way through the mountains, building roads, bulldozing, um, not the kind of imagery that we would normally associate with, um, uh, with environmentalism. Um, but nonetheless, um, the Jewish National Fund does present itself as an environmental organization. This is um, uh, a screenshot from its website, and you'll notice that it calls itself Israel's largest green organization and the oldest green organization in the world. Um, well, leaving aside uh, the oldest um, claim, um, is it really a green organization at all? What um, claims does it have to being a green organization? Um, in many parts of, the, of Europe and North America, its claim, it, it bases its um, charitable status on being environmental, on being committed to environmental improvements uh, in Israel. Um, and uh, it uh, appears as an environmental organization in various international fora perhaps most notoriously in the uh, Conference of Parties to the Framework Convention on Climate Change, where it, is, it has observer status, uh, regularly attends the COP meetings um, in different parts of the world, where it runs fringe meetings presenting to the international delegates just how environmental it is. So today we want to investigate this claim to environmentalism. Um, uh, and uh, look at how the, it, as we've seen in these previous webinars, the, um, uh, the, the, the main function of the JNF, which is uh, ethnic cleansing, which is obtaining land and depopulating the indigenous po Palestinian population, um, has turned itself into um, a pre a presenting as an environmental organization. Um, mainly it's done this through tree planting. Uh, it's always planted trees. It's never really until more recently been a main activity. But this, this poster from the 1920s uh, demonstrates that they had a tree fund right from the early stages of the Zionist colonization of Palestine. And the main reason for this was uh, propagandist. It was a way in which um, ordinary people in different parts of Europe and North America felt that they could contribute to the Zionist effort by donating money for planting trees. So it's early on its main purpose was propagandist. Um, but of course it also uh, in these, um, uh, this is uh, from the, um, this is still during the mandate period, uh, it also presented itself as being um, an industrializing uh, organization, um, obtaining land for factories, for um, uh, um, workers' quarters, etc. And the JNF must provide these lands. So it, it was always sending mixed messages uh, from the environmental point of view. And this Australian JNF poster from uh, 1947 um, shows a, a kind of muscular present, presenting of, of 
um, uh, of itself in, in breaking up uh, um, the lands and, and the, plow, the plow breaks through restrictions and restrictions it's referring to there are restrictions on immigration to Palestine. Um, and another uh, poster from also from 1947 demonstrates its close connection with the military effort uh, which uh, led, led to the to the Nakba. So um, e even uh, in its early days the JNF didn't really present itself very much as an environmental organization and very much presented itself as a colonial organization. And even in 1961, uh, when various other international organizations were starting to form, it was still presenting an image of taming and reclaiming the Negev rather than protecting and um, uh, conserving the Negev, which a lot, of, a lot of other environmental organizations would do. So just historically, um, uh, to, to, just to set it in context, the claim environmentalism is a very new thing. It was in, really invented for ideological purposes as a way in which it can present itself to, uh, to the world. Um, the uh, tree planting was really um, uh, central to the, to the JNS. Um, claim to environmentalism and, and it, it did plant trees right the way through its early uh, Zionist colonization and through the mandate period and also continued to do so um, uh, following the, after the Nakba. Um, but it did so for a variety of different reasons. Um, it did so for marking boundaries, for land reclamation, um, particularly for preventing Palestinians from cultivating the land because uh, cultivation of land was a, was a way of demonstrating uh, land ownership or, or rights to land. And so if you plant trees on it, it stops, it stops the indigenous population from uh, cultivating. Um, it, at various times when there were higher levels of, of um, Jewish migration to Palestine, uh, forestry was used as a way of absorbing the, the surplus labor. Um, forestry was never really uh, a successful commercial enterprise for the, for the Zionists. Um, and the trees that were planted initially were, were alien trees imported from other parts of the world. And even when they were using um, indigenous uh, species, they tended to use them in, in ways that they didn't grow, they didn't, um, uh, weren't, weren't an indigenous, weren't ecologically uh, located. So the Aleppo pine, for example, which may have been just on the edge of, of the, uh, its range, possibly indigenous, but never as a forest tree, which is the way that it was planted by the, the, the Zionists. The Aleppo pine, by the way, was widely used in the mandate, the tail end of the mandate period, um, and renamed by the Zionists as the Jerusalem pine. Um, and caused a lot of ecological damage. So uh, that's just a bit of background, a bit of context. Um, the, the fairly thin claim because it planted trees uh, to being an environmental organization, even though that was a small part of its, of its activities um, and road building, uh, industrial sites, um, uh, etc., were other parts of its uh, the, the development of land, but of course the main purpose was was to obtain the land uh, and uh, evict the Palestinian people uh, from from that. So that's just a bit of, bit of background. Um, uh, we're now going to pass on to our main speakers here, Zainab Ashalafa and Abir El Butma, um, and there will be opportunities for questions. Uh, please do use the Q and A function uh, in the in the webinar um, to ask questions, and we'll we'll gather. We're not sure that we'll have time to answer all questions, but we can we can fire them to the to the two two speakers. Um, turning first to to Zainab. Zainab is a, a, a water expert, a Palestinian water expert, um, based in in Ramallah at the moment. Um, has a long um, uh, a lot of uh, expertise of um, community uh, water, um, uh, community activities uh, around um, water in, in both in the West Bank and also uh, in the Gaza Strip. 
Um, and uh, I really want to uh, thank Zainab for joining us today and um, pass over directly to her. Zainab. Thank you so much, uh, Eirik, and uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, it's uh, unfortunate that uh, Ori Davis uh, had to apologize in the last minute. Uh, I was hoping that he will uh, provide, yani, um, give a better framing uh, than I would do. Uh, but uh, what you have mentioned, Eirik, uh, was uh, very uh, useful. So let's uh, start the presentation. Uh, in this map here, uh, it shows where we are uh, in the Palestinian-Israeli issue. I call it the 170 states solution. We have the uh, in the map Israel in the white, Gaza, and in the West Bank, 168 uh, land enclaves uh, populated, and they are separated by Israeli settlements, uh, legal settlements in the West Bank. And without, basically, people are being gathered in populated enclaves, separated from land and water and resources. Um, experts and politicians from the Palestinian citizens of Israel are seeing that the same is happening for the Palestinian citizens of Israel, the two million uh, of the Israeli population who, who are from Palestinian origins. There also, there are over 70, I think, um, laws of the Knesset, including the ethnicity law that Israel is a Jewish state. And, and those discriminate against the Palestinian citizens of Israel and basically um, gather them in uh, populated enclaves and uh, grab the resources. So here we are after 27 years of the Palestinian-Israeli peace process and uh, uh, more than 50 years on the 67 occupation and over 70 years on uh, the establishment of Israel. Uh, very far away from one state solution or two states or, or any solution at all. Uh, like of a historical background, I want to say that water has always been a key to the uh, um, settlement, uh, Jewish settlement uh, project in Palestine. These are maps from the British Mandate time. Uh, here we see in the green the cultivated land, in the dark green the irrigated agriculture. And here we see in pink the malaria areas where there were swamps, and in red the Jewish settlements. Uh, so the Jewish have from the beginning settled where there is water. And uh, uh, that has been with the help of the British, including the British Navy, and not only Jewish settlers, but the British Navy has worked in, in drying the swamps and establishing settlements. Uh, this is very similar to the poster that you have uh, showed, uh, Eirik. Uh, this has been published not by the GNF, but by the Cultural Committee of the Israeli um, Army. Uh, one year after the establishment of Israel in 1998, uh, 19, uh, sorry, 1949. And it's a, a very um, good representation of uh, how water and agriculture have been used this, uh, you know, as a weapon to, uh, to, to settle and uh, occupy uh, the land. And it shows, you know, you have shown the same poster for the GNF. This is for the Navy. So it shows how the GNF works very well as, uh, as a component of this uh, system. Uh, now we, like in the map, I tried to show how the situation is in general here. I'm, I'm showing the water. Um, so the fresh water withdrawals um, cubic meter per capita per person per year. For the Israeli person, it's 338 cubic meters uh, per year. This is for uh, fresh water, for consumption, for all uses. For the West Banker, it's uh, 36, and for Gaza, it's 5. So the international law does not uh, have a, like a specific formula that say how much we will should get in, in shared resources here between Palestine and Israel. But 
population is a uh, like an important uh, consideration in the divide. So if we uh, estimated like a, an equal share per capita here, we, we see the huge inequality in the distribution. So the Gaza take one percent to the share of the Israeli, the West Bank are eleven percent to the share of the Israeli. Now, on the Jewish National Fund in particular, the Jewish National Fund is a company. It's a, it's a profit company, not a, a non-profit organization. However, it's, uh, and here's the, uh, uh, there's the JNF law of 1953, you know, the, there you can find the information about their nature. Yet they are, like in many Western countries, established as a, a, an NGO, non-profit uh, charity. And this gives them uh, the benefit of uh, tax exemptions that charities take. Mikorot, uh, the, now the relationship between the Jewish National Fund and the water, the uh, water company in Israel is Mikorot, that's the, the I mean, the, the biggest and, and the oldest. And Mikorot was established in 1937, so it was established before Israel, during the mandate time. And it was established as uh, an undertaking of the Hestadrut, uh, Zionist Labor Federation, the Jewish Agency for Land and the Jewish National Fund. So the, the Jewish National Fund has established Mikrot, which I would say is the state arm uh, in in uh, water uh, grab and settlements. Mikrot supplies 80% of Israel drinking water uh, and 70% of the water overall for all uses. And it operates throughout all Israel and in the uh, uh, illegal settlements in the West Bank. So this relationship, I mean, how, like when Mikorot was established during the mandate and during the uh, early uh, settlement project for Jewish settlers and what they do and their size and the involvement of the GNF. It shows that the GNF is complicit in uh, everything basically that is happening on, on water. Um, here just uh, like an overview of the water resources. We have the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, the Mediterranean, the coastal aquifer that's underground water across the Palestinian, uh, the coast like in Israel and Gaza, and then the uh, mountain aquifer underneath the West Bank and Gaza, and where 80% uh, of the annual refill of the mountain aquifer comes from the, the West Bank. So that's the resources which, you know, Mikorot, uh, you know, in charge of uh, control. After the 1967 uh, occupation, Israel issued a series of military orders uh, where they put water under the full control of uh, the military uh, um, commander of uh, in Israel. So in 67, while Israel has like start, like occupied and started the land grab, we showed in the map that most of the West Bank under Israeli control, water has been fully under Israeli control six, since 67. And uh, here, like one of, of the projects of uh, the JNF uh, about the Jordan River. So in uh, 1964, the Jordan River has been uh, established, the new Jordan River uh, that takes the water down to the Negev. Uh, so the Jordan River, there's the upper Jordan River from Lebanon to the Tiberias, and then from Tiberias to the Dead Sea. Uh, this is uh, Almut uh, Dam, established by uh, Mekorot, which the uh, Yani uh, Jenif is one of the owners of it. Uh, we see after Almut Dam, there's no river. Basically, there's a uh, sewage uh, uh, vibe here. Five kilometers south of Lake Tiberias, there's no river at all, no water. And then the mouth of the uh, Jordan River into the Dead Sea, uh, there's 30 um, million cubic meters a year, which is 2% of the uh, annual uh, flow of the Jordan River into the Dead Sea uh, previously. And this is mostly sewage or water coming from uh, small tributary tributaries from uh, Jordan. Um, 
as a result, where the, the Dead Sea is dying, literally, we have so far lost 25% 25 meters of the uh, of the, uh, the, the the sea surface dropped by 25 meters, and it's continuing to drop by 1.2 meters uh, a year. Yani basically, as a result of the uh, diversion of the Jordan, which is the uh, orphan tributary to the Dead Sea and the, the minerals industry. And when we see this uh, yani map, uh, Israel control not only uh, uh, they control the borders, uh, they control the land, they control our access to markets and technology. And so the cost in, of infrastructure for Palestinians is massive. Mikorot operate in the whole of the West Bank, but for the illegal settlements only, not for Palestinians, because Israel is denying uh, the Israeli International Court of Justice. They're denying that the Israeli occupation is occupation. And so they say that they are not obligated to the obligation of the occupier under international law, including provision of services. Uh, but, you know, when, when there's like a large, like, plot of land, the, the cost of infrastructure is much lower than when, when, when the land is such uh, divided, besides, you know, access to markets and technology and so on. Uh, Besides the, the demolitions in the West Bank, where there's, uh, like, uh, services for the uh, the Israeli settlements, there's ongoing demolitions of, of, of structures in general. In the first place, there's no permissions. Permissions are given very rarely. Uh, half 1% of the, uh, of the uh, area C, Israel gives permission for Palestinians to do any construction there. And uh, sometimes the demolition, like the amount of water, like in terms of amount, it's nothing. I mean, when it's uh, uh, like 50 cubic meters or two cubic meters uh, tank, uh, but it's effective uh, in displacement, like from 2009 to 2000 until the year we had over, we had uh, uh, over 7,000 uh, demolitions, and they resulted in around 11,000 uh, 11, uh, Palestinians being displaced from their uh, uh, land. In Gaza, it's catastrophic. In Gaza, uh, 97 of the waters are unsuitable for human consumption. Also, big, uh, huge uh, shortage in electricity supply and the siege since 2007. Here, I'm not giving an exclusive image, but only some examples for the development under occupation. And I remember Eric told me that there's no word de development in English. I'm saying that under occupation, you don't only not develop, you can't even stay where you are and you keep the situation keeps deteriorating. So for instance, the minerals extraction, revenue from minerals extraction from the Dead Sea annually is $4.2 billion. Uh, the share of Palestine is zero. Uh, the loss of the agricultural, the Palestinian agricultural sector because we uh, lack of access to water is $2 billion a year. Uh, the Palestinian economy uh, loses 3.4 uh, billion dollars a year uh, because, like, uh, no access to Area C, and uh, we are unable to operate uh, there. If we compare, like, any of these losses to international aid, we see that in last year we have 590 million dollars. So that the international aid that we are giving, we're been given the Palestinians and where the states sometimes, you know, decide how this money is used and for which political price it's changed if compared to any of, uh, you know, the, the, the potential resources that we can have to grow and develop as a sovereign nation. And for the future, you know, when we are looking for the current, this 170 states is like very... Um, grim reality. And when we look for the future, I mean, and the present also that Israel deny that they are an occupier. And this, uh, they have been seeing their correspondences with the United Nations. And the West Bank, the future, uh, we expect as annexation. 
so population without resources and maybe uh, some displacement and further grab and for Gaza amputation because Gaza from the British mandate time in you know, with the British uh, legacy and and uh, water projects that there's over bombage from uh, and Gaza is a city that is being cut from um, uh, the country that it should be part of and is supposed to be independent. So uh, Gaza is left to their destiny, basically the, the siege and, uh, and uh, poverty and the West Bank probably to a worse destiny and with the annexation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zainab. Um, and we've been looking at the role of the JNF in in uh, confiscating land quite a lot, but uh, we're, it's it's fascinating to see the way that the organization has also been uh, directly involved in the confiscation of, of water uh, and uh, just how essential water is, of course, to, to life of the Palestinians. So um, another form of, uh, another mechanism for ethnic cleansing that the JNF is involved with. Thank you, Zainab. Uh, just to remind people that uh, if you want to ask questions, please post them in the in the Q and A. Um, uh, we'll come back and ask questions to Zainab and Abia together at the end. So um, I want to move on now to um, introduce Abia. Um, Abia Albutma is um, director of the Palestinian Environmental NGO Network. Uh, which is also known as Friends of the Earth Palestine because it is a full member of um, Friends of the Earth International. Um, and Abir um, was originally, I believe, an, an engineer. Um, uh, and she brilliant, brings those skills to understanding the environment uh, of Palestine. So Abir, can I introduce you, please? Uh, thanks, Irene, and uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity uh, to participate in uh, this important webinar. Uh, I will talk about uh, the impact of, uh, of the reality of uh, the GNF in relation to Palestinian environment. Uh, when we talk about uh, GNF and uh, the purpose of establishment of uh, GNF, it is the sole purpose of uh, colonization, colonization of Palestine by obtaining Palestinian land and uh, making it available solely for Jewish. And uh, GNF is uh, using environmental veneer to greenwash uh, its apartheid and uh, ethnic cleansing uh, and its crimes against Palestinian people uh, since uh, its establishment in 1901. Uh, in the past and uh, the present events uh, prove uh, the, uh, that the GNF excels at uh, apartheid and uh, ethnic cleansing practices while wearing the guise of environmental um, charity. Uh, when we talk about the GNF, uh, the GNF is, it is an architect of uh, Palestinians in Africa. And how it is uh, the architect of uh, Palestinians Nakba. Uh, from its creation in 1901, uh, the Zionist movement encouraged uh, the GNF to acquire lands in Palestine to settle Jewish on the acquired lands. Uh, and after the creation of uh, Israel in 1948, headed uh, by Israel uh, land, uh, land law, the GNF continued to acquire more lands uh, belonging to Palestinians uh, in order to uh, evict Palestinians from their land and to uh, acquire more uh, Israeli settlers to their land. Uh, it has also facilitated the schemed uh, uh, and the deliberate uh, disposition of over uh, more than 800,000 Palestinians from their homeland during uh, Israel's creation between uh, 1947 till uh, 1948. And uh, this, uh, this was uh, fulfilled by buying uh, swaps of land uh, from uh, absentee uh, landlords, uh, then leasing it ex exclusively to the uh, Jews. Uh, by uh, seizing refugees' uh, lands and uh, by forcibly and uh, uh, violently uh, dispossessing Palestinians uh, from their uh, their homeland. Uh, 
the GNF, uh, they call themselves as uh, a charity. Uh, the GNF is a charter to uh, carry out discriminatory uh, practices against Palestinian refugees. Uh, they denying uh, uh, them from their uh, returning rights to their homes, uh, while allowing uh, Jewish to settle on the uh, land it owns. Uh, and GNF, they uh, follow, uh, one of the methods that they follow is uh, use, uh, using it to prevent uh, Palestinian refugees uh, from returning to their home. Uh, 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 is, uh, yani, uh, one of the methods is using planting uh, of trees. Uh, they, uh, GNF held the different uh, planting uh, trees uh, within, especially within and surrounding the villages. Uh, that uh, technically uh, cleansed the Palestinians in 1948 and making it impossible uh, for Palestinians to rebuild uh, or uh, farm the villages. Uh, so under the environmental cover, they uh, plant and they organize different planting trees uh, surrounding uh, and between the Palestinian, uh, inside the Palestinian uh, villages. Uh, who were ethnically cleansed from Palestinians in 1948 and making it impossible to rebuild. Uh, and uh, nearly uh, uh, most of the GNF forests and parks were found to be uh, a way to erase, to erase the natural uh, identity of uh, Palestine and to policify the uh, natural uh, heritage. So they changed also the uh, type of the Palestinian trees. Uh, they, uh, uh, uproot the uh, native Palestinian trees and they uh, replant uh, other uh, trees in order to uh, change the identity, the natural identity uh, of uh, Palestine. Uh, I will give you some examples of uh, how GNF, current examples and past examples of uh, how GNF uh, is the greenwashing. Uh, uh, GNF uh, currently is uh, playing a troubling role in the looming annexation uh, of about 33% of uh, West Bank, including the illegal settlements uh, Israel has uh, starting uh, establishment in, since uh, 1967. Uh, one example, uh, in August uh, 19, uh, 2019, uh, the Israeli authorities uh, demolished uh, uh, a property uh, of uh, al qasiya family in al makhour which is uh, uh, an area, uh, agricultural area in uh, Bethlehem. Uh, after, uh, they demolished the uh, property for, uh, for this family. And uh, after... Um, uh, one uh, after uh, after a few days uh, uh, after uh, the demolition, a settler uh, outpost uh, was established uh, uh, next the site where uh, the building of the Garcia family were uh, damaged. And uh, the creation of uh, GNF, uh, one of the subsidy of the GNF, uh, they took part by claiming its ownership of the area. So a few days after the demolition, they uh, built a small. Uh, uh, small outputs uh, for the uh, Israeli settlement, uh, settlers and they also they connected with uh, a solar panel and now they are uh, enlarged the areas that they took in 19, uh, in 2019. Uh, moreover, uh, the same person, a uh, subsidy of the GNF, claims uh, its ownership of uh, nearly uh, 525 donums of uh, land uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that, that, that Israel is uh, confiscated from Palestinians uh, living in a village near uh, Bethlehem of Saul, a village. And the confiscation uh, it was uh, uh, the confiscation of uh, these uh, 500 uh, donums it was adjacent to the illegal settlements of uh, Gosh al -Sion. And they would allow uh, construction of uh, more Jewish uh, only for settlements units. Uh, so they, they uh, always uh, obtain the land in order to, uh, uh, to put control on the land and to get uh, uh, the Jewish expansion for, uh, for the, on the Palestinian uh, land. Uh, 
Uh, other uh, other cases in, in East Jerusalem, uh, many uh, houses. Uh, one of the houses uh, for uh, Somali in uh, family. Uh, the GNF, uh, uh, after a long uh, battle, uh, nearly 30 years of uh, battle between the Palestinians, the, own, the owners of the uh, houses uh, inside the old city of uh, Jerusalem, and uh, uh, and the final decision uh, was the, the eviction uh, from uh, their land to uh, make way for Jewish settlers to settle uh, in the city. And there are different uh, cases uh, inside Jerusalem, uh, like like this. But like this. Uh, uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, um, another example in, in Negev Desert. Uh, Tens of thousands of uh, Palestinians uh, were at their uh, disposition. Uh, and nearly uh, five uh, Bedouin communities in the Negev also uh, face uh, forcible disposition. Uh, on the ruins of uh, their uh, homes, the GNF uh, will be planting trees. As as we uh, used to uh, as they used to make it, uh, uh, and this is the uh, effective instrument uh, for them for the apartheid and the ethnic cleansing. Uh, also, the uh, GNF uh, takes part in deepening and uh, consolidating uh, Israeli apartheid uh, regime and military rule including ethnic, ethnic cleansing, uh, demolishing Palestinian houses, and uh, destroying uh, Palestinian uh, agriculture, uh, uh, also uh, the, uh, controlling uh, water resources uh, and denying the Palestinian uh, uh, rights for uh, water, as uh, Zainab uh, mentioned. Um, uh, for uh, GNF, um, I will give you also another example uh, about uh, how they uh, destroying the environment. Uh, uh, GNF claims that they um, that they convert the Negev desert to uh, a bloom, uh, while uh, in reality they destroy uh, they destroyed the uh, environment uh, by um, uh, by planting uh, uh, forests. Uh, inside the, the Negev desert. Uh, yeah, so GNF, uh, they claiming uh, on its official uh, website that it is Israeli largest green organization and the oldest green organization in the world. Uh, the GNF uh, forestry operations uh, uh, destroy the ecosystem uh, and uh, cause the environmental uh, destruction. Uh, the trees uh, in the, uh, um, uh, the, the the forest that they they planted they changed the ecosystem and they destroyed the ecosystem in the area and, uh, and in in this area there is a unique uh, species uh, so uh, they changed and uh, they damaged uh, they confiscated the uh, the nature in in that area. Uh, also, in uh, they found that uh, uh, these forests in the, in the deserts uh, they cause the more uh, war, more warming than cooling, uh, because the dark mass, mass of uh, forest uh, trees is the absor uh, absorbing solar radiation, while the, uh, the nature, which is the the sand of the, des the, the of the desert and the col the lighter color of the desert, uh, was re you know, it, 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 it reflects the sun heat back into the space. So they cause uh, also uh, a warming uh, problem, and um, they change the ecosystem and the they change the uh, the nature of uh, of this uh, of the desert and also they damaged and they ha uh, this forest it has uh, a negative impact on uh, a unique uh, biodiversity uh, plants and animals in those areas and uh, the, uh, the 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 um, uh, the, the case that I talked about in the Makhrur area also, it is in Bethlehem, it is an uh, agricultural uh, area, and uh, it's a, a huge mountain, uh, a cultivated uh, mountain, and also it has a unique uh, uh, 
uh, uh, wild, uh, wildlife and uh, it, it is one of the uh, important locations uh, in Palestine. Um, uh, uh, for its uh, important uh, biodiversity. And the Israeli plan uh, now enables uh, a small uh, uh, output, but uh, they will surrounding uh, settlements. And so they, they will confiscate uh, all this uh, unique, uh, all this, this unique area. Uh, yeah, in Final um, for for the, civil, for the Palestinian civil society, we hear that uh, GLF is uh, responsible uh, for the ongoing uh, ethnic cleansing and the apartheid practices against the Palestinian people and against the Palestinian environment. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Abia. Um, we, we did have a, a few technical problems uh, there, I'm afraid. Um, uh, hopefully people will have heard um, what, uh, pretty well all you said, but I think that some people had said that they missed the names of the places near Bethlehem where the JNF has been operated and also the name of the place in the Negev that you referred to. Um, and I wonder if you could type those names, so the, the kind of technical the, the, the Arabic names perhaps not familiar to certainly to me. So if you could type the names into the chat, that would be very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. But thank you very much, Abia, uh, for for giving some um, much more uh, up to date than I was um, uh, information about the, the the role that the JNF is playing in uh, actual environmental destruction um, and um, uh, not, not environmental protection. Um, there's been a number of questions coming in and I'm going to uh, just sort of go through a few of them and then ask uh, Zainab and Abia to come back. I, I, maybe Abia, when we come to you, the, because there's been a little bit of technical problem, it might be, um, better to switch the video off, video off when you're actually are, uh, responding to the okay. questions. Um, okay. But let me just pull together a couple of these, these um, questions. Um, there's there's a, a couple of questions about the relationship between the, the JNF and the, the military. Well, and you know, there was a, a previous webinar where we particularly focused on the relationship between the JNF and the military. But I wondered if, if you have any comments on the, the way that the environmentalism, the greenwash, is also used by, uh, by the military, by the IDF, um, uh, through its relationship with, with uh, the JNF. Um, just uh, a question about um, the, the way in which, how it is that Israel um, is able to claim that it's not occupying Palestine, whether that's to do with Oslo. Um, that's more about sort of general is Israeli um, uh, colonization ideology rather than specifically JNF. Um, a specific question there about um, where, for, for Zainab, um, the role of the, the does, does the JNF can have an influential role in Mekoros as in the same way as it does uh, in the land administration? Um, I'm, going, I'm going to just leave it with those questions just a minute. There are other questions which we can come back to, but um, uh, Zeno, I don't know whether you want to um, particularly respond to the issues about the relationship with Mekorot and the, and the relationship with the Israeli military. This is a poster on uh, 64 years in the state, to the state of Israel. So it uh, has been done uh, several years ago. Uh, but uh, it shows how Israel looks into water. I thought that you know, can explain a bit about the relationship between JNF and uh, Mikorot and, and the military. So they see here the water as the um, star of the of the flag of Israel, and as connected to to development uh, and to the establishment of the state. Yani from the beginning, even before Israel was established, to the to the like uh, 
migration of the Jewish uh, uh, population here before the before Israel was established. Um, and in ethnical cleansing, I would say, uh, yes, I mean, uh, the GNF and Israel in general was used water as a tool for ethnic cleansing, but not only. They want water and every drop by water, and that's a good. I mean, water is not only a, a, mean, a mean, it's an end. It's you know, both a mean and an end for the Israeli uh, project. And then uh, under the relationship, like as we said, that Mekorot, the Israeli company, it's uh, sort of like the apartheid army in water for this system. They have been, they have been responsible for the water projects, including uh, the swamp drainage in the beginning, the uh, digging uh, for water, the, the transmission, uh, the distribution, the quality control, all aspects. And they're the, the first and, and the biggest company. There are another one now, Jihon, but Yani Mikorot is the major one. And as JNF is one of the establishing members of Mikorot and they have uh, shares in this company, yes, they have uh, their complicity yani, in everything that has been done uh, related to water. And then on their relationship with the army, uh, maybe like in the next webinar, Yanni Ori Davis will be speaking about this. Uh, but he has an, a new book and, and uh, it's still not published, but I've seen Yanni some draft and he's saying that the JNF has a, a direct uh, support to the army and this is why he has been putting evidence on. Uh, but uh, in water, uh, yes, I mean, uh, Mikorot operates in, uh, has been part of the Israeli uh, colonial settler project from the British mandate time. It was established in 1930s for Israel, uh, and, you know, which the JNF has uh, been one of the founders and the funders uh, for this uh, company. And uh, they operate in the West Bank. So uh, the water that is 100% controlled by the Israel is managed by uh, Mikorot, uh, which is uh, which the JNF is complicit in. And uh, uh, this, yani, all of that is done in uh, cooperation with uh, the army. Now, on the uh, how Israel is not considering itself an occupier, I'm going to type my email in the chat box so I can give the interested people the, uh, a copy of the resolution of the Israeli High Court of Justice and their correspondences with the United Nations. But the, the position of the, for the United Nations is that Israel is an occupation. Um, and so uh, the uh, international humanitarian law applies in the Geneva Convention, including that Israel should not... Uh, transmit its population to the occupied territories or use the uh, natural resources, including water and land, and should they should provide service, services to the occupied people, including water, and should be uh, in charge of their uh, well-being and so on. Uh, Israel say that th that uh, there has never been um, um, Palestine, like southern Palestine. Uh, there has been a British mandate, and then uh, the West Bank was governed by uh, Jordan, and Gaza was governed by uh, Egypt. Uh, and so they have not uh, occupied the southern state, and so it's not an <laughs> occupation. It's a disputed Yani land, and uh, uh, now um, with uh, 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 with any like uh, future solution, uh, if it's the Trump uh, plan, the American administration plan, or annexation, or the Palestinian would, for the first time in history, have the opportunity to have sovereignty over a uh, piece of land. Uh, so yeah, I mean, but the, the UN has been denying this. Uh, uh, resolution. I mean, I have seen, seen the uh, communication between the United Nations and Israel on the covenant on social, economic and cultural rights, because the right on water is there. 
the committee had uh, concluding remarks for Israel about their responsibility on uh, water rights in Palestine, and they said, no, please refer to the uh, uh, resolution of the Israeli High Court of Justice number so and so. So I'm happy to give you the details, but that's it. It's not the position of the United Nation, but that's the position of, the, of Israel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zainab, for, for a very detailed uh, response there. And, and thank you for making your email available for further, more detailed um, uh, questions to, to transfer, answer these questions in a bit more detail. Um, Abir, if I could come to you and, and, and um, you know, and encourage you to respond to the, the uh, questions that, that Zainab has responded to. Uh, but also particularly, there's a number of questions, I think, which are uh, uh, aimed, aimed at you, um, in particular in relation to the, what role or what opportunities Palestinian environmental organizations um, have to, to challenge uh, the JNF at international settings and, and, and expose their greenwash. And, and in particular, uh, the, 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 the Framework Convention um, on Climate Change, the COP uh, meetings. Uh, so, Abir, can I bring you in, please? Uh, yes, uh, for the... For for the Jewish National Fund and relations with the Israeli military. I think the Jewish National Fund works uh, hand in gloves with uh, Israeli military. Uh, for the case in, in, in the Negev Desert, uh, which is the big village in Al Aqarif, uh, this, uh, this community uh, has been repeatedly destroyed uh, to make way for a Jewish National Fund forest. So it's a military uh, order uh, uh, under uh, environmental uh, uh, cover for, for the Jewish National Fund in order to establish a forest. And there are different cases in different communities, uh, how it is in the, it is the same uh, purpose for uh, colonialism. Uh, for the uh, environmental uh, organizations, uh, 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 environmental organizations, we, uh, we've worked uh, uh, in order to, uh, to, to, uh, to support the communities that are separate from the uh, Israeli practices and Israeli violations. Uh, so we've uh, supported the communities in different uh, in different activities and different actions in order to uh, increase their steadfastness in their land, uh, while uh, GNF uh, and uh, also the Israeli uh, military, especially in the uh, last years, they uh, the Israeli military. Uh, uh, they uh, declare uh, some uh, a huge amount of areas uh, in order to make it uh, like a conserv conserv nature conservative areas, uh, and they use uh, they use the, it in order to uh, enlarge and expand the Israeli uh, settlements, especially agricultural uh, settlements, and they use a huge amount for uh, military actions, especially in the Jordan uh, Valley. Uh, so uh, what we did is uh, documenting these uh, violations uh, against uh, the Palestinian sovereignty on their land uh, because the uh, Israeli uh, military, they both control uh, all a huge area, uh, agricultural areas, especially in, uh, in the Jordan Valley, where the annexation will be expand, expanded in these areas. Uh, and uh, they declare uh, a huge amount of uh, agricultural areas under uh, Israeli conserv conservation, natural conservation areas. And a huge amount also for uh, military, uh, action, military zones uh, for uh, Israelis. So they uh, put control all over a huge percentage of Palestinian land under these uh, reasons. Uh, what, uh, yani, uh, the apartheid uh, 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 cannot be uh, uh, eco-friendly at all. And uh, what Israel promotes itself as uh, it is uh, environmental uh, country, uh, uh, eco-friendly country. I will give you uh, one example. Uh, 
the main uh, source for uh, producing electricity in uh, Israel, which is uh, burning coal, and it is a very uh, uh, dirty uh, source of uh, energy. Uh, and how they claim so, like it's a, a green uh, country and it is eco-friendly country uh, while depending on burning coal on producing uh, electricity. So uh, Israel always uh, they promote itself like uh, eco-friendly and uh, like a very developed country, but while they use a very uh, old uh, techniques in producing uh, uh, yani, uh, the, uh, electricity in inside Israel. And there are different uh, uh, examples in this uh, for this case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abir. Um, uh, and I think the, the your reference to Al Arakib in the Negev uh, is is perhaps also a, a a good link to one of the other questions, which is whether the the God's Channel, God TV, is still planting um, forest there. And, I, and I, my understanding is that it that it is. It's a um, a uh, Christian Zionist organization that um, linking with the JNF is is contributing to the the forests which are being used to try and um, uh, cover the uh, ethnic cleansing of Al Arakib. Um, but of course, Al Arakib continues to resist resist that. Um, we are coming towards the end uh, of of the the session, um, and I think. Uh, one of the things about uh, uh, that we've pointed out is that the the tree planting that um, uh, the JNF has done um, is uh, the, the, the tree planting has a, has a very strong ideological perspective. Um, its main purpose was um, uh, sorry. His main purpose was, was ideal, particularly amongst Jewish communities across across the world, to try and give a, a, a pretense of of environmentalism and that it's uh, doing a, a good a good thing. We're, we will um, get the name of Uri's book um, out. Uh, I'm, uh, Zainab, do you know the name of Uri's book? Can you help us with that? You, you're muted. You're muted, Zainab. Uh, still in the printing, the most recent book. Maybe he will share with you any more information in the next session. But I remember in the cover, there's an um, image for an Israeli military tank with the JNF logo on it. On it. So that's part of what the book is about, the direct uh, complicity of JNF without, you know, uh, green or otherwise coverage. Okay, so so we don't. It's not out yet, but we'll we'll we will make sure that uh, um, uh, it, it, when it is, we can we can uh, circulate information about that. Um, I'm going to try to uh, uh, give an um, a bit of information about. Uh, is this going to work? Yes, hopefully you can see that in in the uh, screen share. Um, one of the things that uh, the JNF, as we said, has has done, um, which has tried to promote itself as a as an environmental organisation, is to encourage people to donate money to plant a tree um, to contribute to the Zionist colonisation of, of of Palestine. Um, the what stopped the JNF UK is is doing is to contribute to um, an alternative planter tree, a planter tree in Palestine, where um, we're partnering with the Stop the Wall um, uh, Palestinian campaigning organization in, in alliance with other uh, Palestinian resistance groups to raise money to plant a tree in Palestine, as in a Palestinian tree. Um, as a means of resisting settlement in, in Palestine. And on the Stop the JNF uh, website, there's a bit of a information about that and how you can make a donation. So it's a, a way of, of countering the, 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 the technique that the JNF does uh, by using the same technique and planting trees to, um, uh, to, to resist uh, colonization in the West Bank. Um, and 
if you go to the, the Stop the Wall uh, website, it will give you a bit more information. This is, um, it's called You Are Not Alone is what they're calling it. Uh, the, it was um, used to uh, harvest olives in October, but um, the, the same efforts of olive tree planting will be followed by another action of strengthening the rootedness of Palestinians in their lands Amid, amid the uprooting attempts of Israeli apartheid, the plantation of olive trees in various parts of occupied West Bank. So please uh, do donate uh, to this uh, important um, activity, tree planting as political resistance to Zionist colonization in the occupied West Bank. Um, uh, before I return to Zainab and Abia to, for some final words, I just want to um, make a, a, a reference. One of the questions was about moves to oppose the presence of KKL or JNF uh, at the COP. Um, we are, to stop the JNF UK, are working with a number of Palestinian organizations, including Friends of the Earth Palestine and Stop the Wall. Um, to uh, put together a call of the uh, environmental NGOs involved in, in organizing for COP26 in Glasgow in November 2021 to make a call for the JNF to have no place in, in, in the COP. Um, it's unlikely that the United Nations would, would, would throw the, J, the JNF out. Um, but if all the other environmental NGOs who are attending are, are willing to say we'll have no, uh, nothing to do with this organization, it's not an environmental organization, all it is is greenwash for ethnic cleansing, then we believe that that will send a very strong message that the JNF is not welcome at the, at the COP. So that's, uh, the, the wording of that uh, is not quite um, launched yet. But if any of you who are listening to this are involved in an, uh, an environmental organization, large or small, um, please do get in touch um, if you're willing to, to sign up to that declaration in preparation for its launch. And one of the first uh, UK organizations that signed the, the declaration pre-launch was Friends of the Earth Scotland, which is obviously where the, the, COP is, uh, the next COP is going to take place. So um, uh, thank you very much. I want to give the final words to Abir and Zainab. Um, uh, but uh, so, uh, but thank you very much, everybody, for for uh, participating. So um, Zainab, can I ask you to to say your final words? Thank you so much, uh, Eric. Uh, uh, just a final thing. Yeah, here I want to show a map from the time of the British mandate. Uh, and it shows that the, the, pro the projects that the mandate had in cooperation with Zionist organizations. Um, I have not instigated the complicity of GNF in particular, but uh, here it shows that there has been over bombage in the aquifer underneath Gaza since 1935. Uh, and uh, this has uh, contributed to the catastrophic situation today in Gaza when Gaza has been cut out and isolated and sieged and uh, they ended up with the only water available is the southern end of the coastal aquifer. So, I mean, that's to say that these crimes are uh, continuing and the impact uh, yani continues for decades and continue to wars. Um, my message uh, to the yani, uh, you know, uh, when I lived in the UK for a year and it was the first time I lived away from Palestine, I think I found an answer to what people used to ask me in, uh, um, in talks about Palestine, like how I can still be positive and laugh and I think I laugh because I cannot want, I don't want to cry <laughs> that's a way to uh, to express any yani, tension about what's happening sometimes I feel any yani, it's hopeless 
sometimes I feel if we have to fight the, the double, we will fight the triple. And, and that's yani, it, uh, how it goes. And that's how, how uh, I think you feel also like as a solidarity movement. But I want to say that your uh, solidarity is highly appreciated. It's not uh, taken for granted. And uh, usually my message for people is to support the BDS, to write to their MBs, to share information. Uh, to uh, do what uh, they can do. Um, yeah, uh, that's yani, my advice to myself, yani, is what I shared with people to do what we can do and to remain uh, hopeful. I have a friend from Gaza who said we have the obligation to stay hopeful, so I take it very seriously <laughs> since he is uh, from Gaza and he said, so that's my message to everybody and thank you so much. Thank you, Zainab. And Abia, your final words? Yeah, for, um, for the past and present events, uh, these events prove that uh, the GNF uh, excels at uh, apartheid and uh, ethnic cleansing uh, mm. under uh, environmental uh, charity. And uh, we are we as Palestinians, environmental activists, and uh, civil society organizations uh, declares that GNF is uh, a resist organization and they're responsible for the ongoing ethnic cleansing. And uh, we call uh, all the supporters in order to uh, to, um, to strengthen our position for uh, uh, our call of the no place uh, for the GNF in COP26. Uh, and uh, for this, the same call is uh, to, uh, to share the reality of uh, GNF work on the ground in Palestine and uh, how it is uh, to show the apartheid practices for the GNF in, uh, in Palestine. Um, yeah, this is my message. Um, yeah, and the uh, the, the, the main yeah, the main uh, message is uh, to uh, work strongly and work together in order to make uh, no place uh, for GNF in COP26. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Abia. Thanks both of you, Abia and Zeynep, for um, very informative uh, presentations uh, on the greenwashing aspect of the JNF. Um, and uh, for those uh, questions that haven't been answered, um, uh, sorry, we haven't got time, but I have taken a, com uh, a copy of them and hopefully we'll be able to uh, um, communicate these via our website. If you are not uh, already uh, signed up for for the um, um, webinar and the up updates on the new from the website, please please do. Um, if one of the first questions was about the ongoing battle to have the charitable status of the JNF revoked in the UK. That is continuing. Uh, it's a long process, um, but it, it is something that, that uh, the Stop the JNF UK is working on. And um, uh, we are still planning to tackle the, the KKL Scotland, which is another a, a separate charity. Um, uh, so it just, um, uh, it's just really for me to say thank you again to Zainab and to Abia. Uh, uh, good to hear of the work that you're doing and our support for your uh, struggles uh, in Palestine uh, and our ongoing solidarity here. Um, I think that covers the, uh, what I had to say. Please don't forget to check onto the website uh, support, stop the, the wall in its tree planting as a resistance to uh, occupation. And if you are involved with any environmental organization, please do get in touch with us about supporting the call to have the JNF um, kept out of COP26. Thank you all very much. Goodbye.